Hello, my name is Jose Pablo Fouch. I'm a PhD candidate at Imperial College London. Today, I will be presenting SNAKE, a Bayesian optimization algorithm. The algorithm specializes on the setting where large changes in experimental inputs can lead to large experimental costs. The work has been done in collaboration with Shishan Sang, Calvin Tse, Mark van der Velk, and Ruth Misner from Imperial College, and Robert Lee, Berang Shafi, and David Waltz from BASF. The work will be presented at NeurIPS at the end of 2022, where you can also find a shorter version of this video and a poster presentation. Bayesian optimization is a collection of methods specializing on the optimization of black box functions. It usually involves sequentially creating the function on a search space X for a limited budget T. By the end, we end up with a sequence of paths consisting of inputs or experiment designs and outputs or experimental observations. The aim is for our best experiment to be close to the function's optimum. We will be focusing on a novel formulation. We are still trying to maximize a black box function. However, we introduce an associated cost when changing an experiment from input xi to input xi plus one. We want to maximize the function for the smallest possible cumulative cost. Furthermore, we assume there is a time delay between starting an experiment and receiving an observation. So the data set at time t is given by all experiments up to iteration t minus t delay. Finally, as it is common in base optimization, we will be modeling f using a Gaussian process. As a motivating example for this setting, consider a droplet microfluidic reactor. In them, we can control conditions such as a temperature and flow rate. However, large changes to either input means we are faced with long waiting times while the system stabilizes. In addition, we have a time delay because we must wait for droplets to flow from the entrance of the reactor to the end before obtaining any output. Therefore, we seek an algorithm that prefers smaller input changes and works asynchronously. We propose the following general approach to this problem. Step one is that we use batch methods to select all experiments we want to sample in advance. This helps us deal with any delays in observations returning. More importantly, we are also able to order the experiments in a way that minimizes the input costs. Finally, we can follow this path defined by the ordering, but when we receive new results, we seek to update the path. To select the batch of experiments, we want to use some tons on sampling, which uses the Gaussian process's own randomness to achieve batch diversity. It works by taking a sample of the GP posterior and optimizes it to obtain an experiment design. Since all experiments will be independent of one another, it is scalable to very large batches. This is particularly important because our batches must be as large as the budget, which could be hundreds of points. Once we have selected all experiments, we need to decide on an ordering that makes the input cost as small as possible. This is equivalent to solving the traveling salesman problem on a fully connected graph, where every experiment design is a node and the weight of every edge is the cost of moving from one design to the next. Solving this problem is NP-hard, but it can be done quickly using approximation methods. The next question becomes how to update the path once we begin to receive experimental results. The most naive way of doing this is by creating a new batch of points using the updated Gaussian process posterior and then resolving the traveling salesman problem. However, we found that this leads to the method getting stuck in local optima. The reason why this happens is because every time we resample, we are reintroducing exploitative points. And these exploitative points are always chosen for early evaluation by the traveling salesman problem. We propose a solution to this problem, which we call point deletion. We use sampling to get a measure of excess exploitation, and then we remove it. More details about point deletion and why it is needed can be found in the paper. Putting Thompson sampling, the traveling salesman problem, and point deletion together, we obtain sequential basin optimization by adaptive connecting samples, or SNAKE. The following figure details all three steps that SNAKE has to do at each iteration. The leftmost picture shows the actually taken optimization path in red and the planned one in blue. In the middle picture, we can see a new batch of sample points as dots, in green the deleted ones, and in black the accepted ones. Finally, in the last steal, we can see the new path created using the traveling salesman problem. Feel free to pause the video to see the figure in more detail, or you can find or you can look at figure two in the paper. We now show a short video. In this video, you can see how Snake is quickly and interactively doing all three steps and moving around the search space. This time, the red line represents the points being evaluated but not yet observed due to time delay. You can see that it looks like a snake traversing the space, which is what inspired the name of the algorithm.
and will not present experimental results. We begin with a synthetic benchmark without delay. On the y-axis, we have love regret, a measure of how close we were to the optimum. We want to minimize this as much as possible. On the x-axis, we have the cost required to achieve such a regret. Different variations of snake can be found in red, and for each case, we can see that snake achieves regret similar to the best methods, but at significantly lower costs. If we start looking at benchmarks with delay, the results are even better. This time, snake significantly outperforms all other, all, ben, all other baselines at low cost. The reason for this is because asynchronous patch optimization methods strongly focus on experimental diversity, which leads to very large and costly input changes. Finally, we tested on the real-world SNARK chemistry benchmark using the summit package. The cost function was also real-world inspired and modeled using a first-order dynamical system. Snake achieves regret similar to classical optimization methods but at approximately 40% of the cost. As a second real-world example, we consider the problem of environmental monitoring. In particular, we seek to find the larger source of contamination in the Ipacaray Lake in Paraguay. We consider three different objectives, as shown on the screen. In this paper, in the paper, we explain how snake can be adapted to optimize all objectives simultaneously, and here we show a path, a snake path that goes through the all optimum on all three objectives. In the single objective case, we are the best performer in two out of three benchmarks. In the simultaneous optimization experiment, we are the only method consistently finding all three optima. If you are interested in learning more about this problem, please read the paper and also feel free to contact me at the email shown on this slide. Thank you very much for your attention.